Hey, this is Doc Eric. Welcome to my YouTube neighborhood, the channel where we give you one mindset tip and one body set tip, typically rolled into one video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to survive and thrive during the holidays, and that counts for any single holiday that you run into. So let's go ahead and jump in. So for most of us, we're constantly chasing the dream of increasing strength and minimizing fat gain, or maybe some of us are in a caloric deficit, we're actually looking to lose weight. And this is typically things that we do before holiday season begins. So whether that's from the winter into the spring, the spring through the summer, the summer into the fall, or right around those uh, fall to winter holiday times, we're always striving for looking and feeling our best. So when these holiday seasons roll around, for a lot of us that leads to anxiety because we think that you know a couple of days of poor eating are going to completely derail our progress. They're gonna make us overweight, we're gonna get depressed, and we're gonna have to start from scratch all over again. So today I'm here to tell you that that's definitely not the case, but it's also something to pay attention to when you're heading into the holidays. So what we wanna talk about today is we wanna talk about ways that you're able to truly enjoy yourself without feeling anxious, or depriving yourself of certain foods that you may not have had in a while without derailing your overall progress. So the first point I wanna make is that food is a very big part of our culture. So whether it's your family heritage, whether it's a particular seasonal holiday, uh, food is a huge part of what we do. And knowing that the food itself or the culture itself doesn't control you is very freeing. So if you come from a family where typically you eat a lot of foods that are high in carbohydrates, don't let the carbohydrate define you, but allow yourself to enjoy that food uh, without feeling guilty. The second thing, and this one is very important, is you don't need to overindulge or overstuff yourself to enjoy any holiday experience. Right? The goal is not to eat every single item on every single plate and say, okay, now that I've got it out of my system, I can trudge along to the next holiday. That's not what we're talking about. So if you're looking on a scale of zero to 10, where zero out of 10 in terms of hunger is you being ravenous, and 10 out of 10 is you stuffing yourself all the way up to your neck and feeling like you're gonna puke, maybe you wanna aim for a six. Plan to eat for a six. That doesn't mean to plan for eating a six every single day of the holiday, but allows yourself to say, here I am at a six, I'm comfortable at a six, I don't feel like I've overindulged, I don't feel like I overstuffed myself, I had a pretty darn good time, and then the following day, when I'm back at home, I can get back on my nutrition plan and my fitness plan. So one of the things that we see with people who run into the holidays, that holiday food buzzsaw, is they typically say, okay, I'm gonna be eating as clean as possible and screw everybody else, right? So let's take Thanksgiving, for example. So you uh, take your uh, fresh plate, your fresh clean plate, you look for the driest piece of turkey, you take the minimal amount of stuffing that's not gonna offend anybody, you look for the vegetables that have not been drizzled in oil, maybe take them from the top, you walk right past the dessert table at the end of the day, only to know that you uh, didn't satisfy that itch, maybe the willpower is very, very low, and then you return to the table or the fridge later on, and you completely break your rules and you stop yourself. You have uh, many more pieces of uh, cake or candy that you normally would have, piece of pie after piece of pie, maybe you're diving into that bowl of stuffing, um, you know, things like that. So the take home here for that person is they end up consuming way more food and way more calories than they normally would have if they would have only allowed themselves to have a little bit of each of everything during the meal experience, eating slow, eating mindfully, and really enjoying the experience. So if you're somebody who wants to do specific macro tracking during any holiday, that's gonna be a personal decision. There's gonna be a little bit more leg room on your side of things because now you're gonna be having to account for, is this grilled, is this deep fried, is that battered, things like that. It can absolutely be done. So what I would say for those individuals who wanna do the macro tracking, is to uh, a little bit overestimate your calories. So what that means is when you type things into, for example, MyFitnessPal, and you type in uh, breaded chicken, right? what you can do is you can say, well, uh, let me put in uh, six ounces as opposed to five ounces. What that's gonna do is by overestimating, it means you're not gonna be over consuming calories or you're not gonna be going completely off the rails. You also wanna make sure that you're not overstressing about this either. You know, a gram here or a gram there, or five grams here or five grams there, it's not gonna make a difference uh, in the overall scheme of things. You know, we've all heard the term that one day of uh, clean eating is not gonna make you, uh, you know, lean and cut, just like one day of bad eating is not gonna make you completely overweight and obese and not fit into any of your clothes. The body doesn't work like that. Multiple days in a row, yes, you can start to run into problems, but a single day, not so much. Okay, now let's talk about portion control. So when we talk about portion control, you wanna survey the options. 
So these are the things that you wanna make sure that you nail down first, right? So for me personally, what I would do is I would look at all the options and I would satisfy my protein numbers first, right? We all know how important protein is in terms of a building block for healthy muscles, as well as muscle uh, repair and growth. So you wanna start with a good protein source first. So that goes on my plate first. Then what I look at is I look at my carbohydrate options. I look at my starchy carbs and then I look at my vegetable carbs. I look at what might have a little bit of oil, what might have a lot of oil, and depending upon my mood and depending upon what I'm hungry for, I may end up choosing the vegetables that are dipped in oil, but what I'll also do is I'll make the conscious decision to have a little bit less of that starchy carb. Right? Or if I see that something has a powdered sugar on the top, if it's a dessert at the end, I may choose to have half that cookie, but I may not eat the whole cookie. But if I want the whole cookie and it's still on my plate, I might choose to finish off that cookie, but I'm not gonna reach for 12 more right after because I finished off one cookie and it threw me off. So always know that you can be a little bit flexible. Another tip to keep in mind too is to make sure that you're staying on top of your liquids. Sometimes we mistake hunger uh, for dehydration. So make sure that you're well hydrated throughout the day and that's gonna kinda help you make better food choices. Another thing to keep in mind is eating more food doesn't make it taste better or enrich the experience. More food tends to offset those hunger signals, so we go from that six out of 10 all the way up to that 10 out of 10, and that's where we can start to run into trouble. So just remember, more is not better, better is better. Enjoy the quality, enjoy the experience. Also, don't forget that when you're going to any holiday experience, don't just interact with the food that's there on your plate, but also survey and interact with those that are around you. Right? You don't wanna go home and tell all your friends, hey, I had the best experience with that corn on the cob this weekend. It was fantastic, we were making eyes, it was fantastic, we felt great, it was perfect. That's not what we're talking about. Make sure that when you're enjoying your food, you're also enjoying the people that you're spending your time with as well. Another point that if you're somebody who has been a planned eater for most of their life, you're typically, typically gonna have a better experience. So these are the people that know every meal, I need to have a planned amount of protein, I need to have a planned amount of starchy carb, I need to have a planned amount of healthy fats, and I need to have a healthy amount of vegetables. These are the people that kinda know how to hit all of those parameters. So if you're one of those people, this is an easy way to navigate the holidays because you can make sure that you can hit all of those different items on your plate, but you can also build in a sweet, a sweet treat option if you would like. So for example, you might survey an entire plate of food and say, well, I really haven't eaten much today, so I'm gonna make my biggest meal my dinner meal, but I might only have a small piece of dessert. Or what you might do is you might say, I'm gonna take that meal, scale it down a little bit, because grandma's pumpkin pie is looking pretty darn good, and I wanna have a big old slice of that, so that person just offset their calories, but total, they were able to kinda of pay attention. So that's something else to think about as well. Another thing to do as well is to listen to your body. You wanna stop when you're starting to feel full or if you stop enjoying what you're eating. Now this is a very important point because this is when a lot of people start to tap into that guilt mindset. So let's say for example, you're eating a piece of grandma's pumpkin pie and you've gone beyond the point of fullness and you've gone beyond the point of enjoying it and now you're starting to say, wow, I took a big wedge of that pie, I might as well eat another slice and another slice and just call it a day because I'm already there. Right, you wanna kinda see that roadblock as it's happening and kinda pull back, maybe you push the plate away, maybe take a couple of sips of water and then see how you feel. If you truly wanna finish off the rest of grandma's pie but not feel guilty about it, go ahead and have some. If you feel like you might start to dip into that water, then you kinda pull back and say, I'm done with the pie, you know, and then kinda walk away a little bit. You can walk away mentally a little bit from that. Another thing that you can look at when you're eating around the holidays is to not see success or failure as a black and white, but kind of look at it as shades of gray. Enjoy the experience for what it is, because you know that when you're back into your home routine, you're gonna get back on track, back on program with whatever you're doing in terms of food, and would also whatever you're doing with your fitness as well. The final tip I wanna make is avoiding the temptation to dip into what we call compensatory behavior. So defining it, what that means is these are the individuals that will consume a, a huge amount of food. And then what they do is they build in uh, exercise to offset that. So this might be the person that eats two slices of grandma's pie and then later on that evening goes and runs 12 miles to burn off those calories. Or this is the person that mentally punishes themselves the following day is that I have to work out extra hard to offset the food that I ate the night before and they feel guilty the entire time. Right? That's not what we want to do. We want to build in fitness as it naturally occurs without seeking additional fitness. And you also want to make sure that you're enjoying the food that you're eating without mentally saying, okay, well, I have to calculate this piece of pie is going to equal two miles of running or it's going to equal an extra 60 minutes of uh, high resistance training in the gym. You don't want to, you don't want to start to walk into those uh, uh, waters.
And a final thought is if you feel like you've had a nutritional whoopsie and you ate a little bit more food than you normally do, or you indulge in a couple more desserts that you normally do, you want to kind of take a step back and say, what did I learn from this experience? Did I learn that I tried to hold off on my willpower as much as possible throughout the entire meal? My willpower failed and then I had an entire pie to myself. You know, is that a learning moment for you to say, what did I learn about that, that end result? Would it have made sense, for example, to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to have a piece of pie and a cookie on top, but I'm going to avoid having the rest of the pie and the rest of that plate of cookies later on. Right, so you always want to make sure that uh, you're always learning something from your uh, experiences because nothing is a mistake, everything is a learning experience. So we talked about a lot of different concepts today, both mindset and body set. So what did you take away from today's video? Don't forget to leave some comments down below. Let me know what you learned. Maybe share some of your experiences, things that you learned along the way, and things that could help other viewers as well. Also, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, as well as share these videos with people that you know that can benefit from them. I love making these videos. They typically come from content that I interact with on a patient-to-patient -patient basis, as well as direct messaging that gets sent to me as well. And until next time, stay healthy and enjoy those holidays. Don't beat yourself up.